What's up, Managing Madrid Podcast listeners? This is Keon Sobani. What you're about to listen to or watch, depending on if you're on YouTube or on the podcast app, is a small clip from our patron-only episode, which went up on Tuesday for patrons over on patreon.com slash managingmadrid. The entire episode was a stat review of Real Madrid's first half of the season, the most interesting wrinkles of the season. And it's available both in audio and video form if you're a patron. And that's because there was a lot of screen sharing in this one. We provided visuals and graphs that you could follow, follow along with in the conversation if you wanted to. So if you want access to the full episode, which was about an hour long, I think, that's over on patreon.com slash managing Madrid. And this clip is specifically about Vinicius Jr. and his importance. So enjoy it. Thanks for listening. And let's jump in. Let's move to visual number three, Vinicius Jr.'s ball carries. So do you want to explain some of the danger he creates through through these ball carries? Yeah, so like I mentioned, while Tony Cruz and Vinicius' uh, overall number, raw numbers of threat, create, uh, threat created uh, in, in, in La Liga so far are almost similar, the way they do it is very different. So Vinicius is like, we know he is one of the best ball carriers in, in world football right now. Uh, in La Liga, uh, he has recorded the most number of progressive carries. So now progressive carries are just carries that move the ball uh, closer to your to the opposition goal. So that is what, uh, I mean, that is a desirable quality. You want to have players who perform actions that get you closer to your uh, to the opposition goal and you can try to score now what is interesting in the way uh, in this plot in in this particular plot where we see all of his ca- progressive carries visualized is where they start how long they are and where they usually end this is like the three point uh thing whenever you're looking at any sort of carry map you can tell a lot about the player's tendencies when carrying the ball and this is how you can assess a player's tendencies. So if you if you focus on, uh, let's start with the end point of where this carries are. So the circle on the, on the visualization is where these carries end. And like you can see, a lot of these carries attack the penalty box. Now, Vinicius is very quick off the feet. He has excellent acceleration. He can just get past you uh, in, a, in a blink of an eye. And... When he's attacking the box like that, when he's creating that separation with his pace, with his skills, he is in a in a position where he can then either go further down the touch, uh, attack the byline and play a cutback, which we have seen a lot of times, or he can play a quick little one-two just around the edge of the box where as soon as he has entered the uh, entered the box with his carry. So it opens up multiple avenues for him. And plus it helps because now when he's in the box, the opposition have to be careful, right? Because they cannot stick a leg out because he's quick. If if they mistime it, that's a penalty. So there's this, uh, it puts the opposition in a very tough spot about what to do because dealing with his pace is, is a problem in itself. And then making a rash decision or just being a tad bit slow will put them at the risk of conceding a penalty. So, the way he is able to attack the box consistently is a major point of uh, major value added to Real Madrid's offense, and the way uh, and where he's picking the ball is also important. So, like where a lot of his carries start is he's picking up the ball close to the left uh, left touch line, or uh, and very uh, and at times he's very close to the halfway line as well. So, like. He is just single-handedly moving the ball up up fields for us. If if nothing is working, a lot of times he will drop to the halfway line. He'll receive the ball and then he will take on one two players and just go through uh, the opposition, just break their lines on his own. And that is, uh, I I feel that is an invaluable quality. Like you cannot you cannot teach that. That is something that he has in his game. And he is so he has grown uh, a lot in that he has become efficient in the way he does that. He, he, even if it's like even if he stop in his track, he will uh, get a foul or like he will get Real Madrid a set piece from that position, which is again a threatening uh, spot. And Tony Cruz then can deliver something from there. So like 
it's a two way threat with him he can either either you stop him with a foul and run the risk of conceding a free kick in a tough spot or a penalty inside the box once he has reached it or you let him do his thing and he will still uh, rip you apart and break lines with his ball carrying so a ball carrying is is his major part of uh, a major part of his game and that has also like been a major part of real madrid's uh, threat creation and chance creation mechanism uh, ever since like he, he has been integrated into the team i feel i mean just one of elite one of the elite weapons he has along with many other things such as dribbling and carving i mean this is kind of related to that but i think it's interesting is that what's interesting about this is that there's such clear pure danger in this ball carries when you look at it in this way on the chart it's so many into that left half space in the box, as you pointed out. You know, there's like the Kamavinga slash Kovacic ball carry type, which is very important for ball progression. But this one is just like right into the penalty area. And once he's in there, there's so many avenues that can open up for Real Madrid because it's so hard to stop him in the box because he's such an unpredictable player. He can either cut by you, he can go to the byline, duck his shoulder, cut it back. And he's gotten so good at the calculated cutback from that position to feed attackers in the box. He doesn't hit it blindly across the face of goal. He knows where his teammates are. He knows how to take a, an extra touch, two touches, three touches to make sure the defense opens up, a player arrives. He can he can hit that so so well and calculated. And once he gets in those positions, it's it's, it's so incredibly hard to stop. My favorite is when he just cuts in and looks across the face of goal. He can either hit Benzema, Rodrigo, or Fede, or cut it back to Moritz Cruz, Chuomeni, or just cut, keep cutting in and just shooting it. And he's so dangerous in that position. Um, I think the other thing that's interesting about this Yash is that none of these ball carries are superfluous. Like sometimes you can get from point A to point B with the vertical pass he often doesn't have that ahead of him because if it's a transition attack, he has to bring the ball forward himself. There's no one ahead of him to play that vertical pass to. It's him that needs to get from point A to point B. And, and there are a few in world football that can do it better better than him, Yash. Yeah, Let's definitely. Like... Yeah, go ahead. No, it's nothing. I just wanted to say, yeah, that that's true because we do you don't need an entire mechanism uh, for that. Like Real Madrid, if if everything is failing, a lot of times you can just pass him the ball and he'll do his thing and he will break lines and get you into the opposition box. And that is something that that can turn to be a that can prove to be a game changer and has proved to be a game changer in a lot of moments for Real Madrid in the last two seasons at least. So yeah, I mean it's it's an incredible quality he has. Speaking of line breaking and game changing moments. These are Vinicius Jr. take-ons. Do you want to go in detail on this? Yeah, so I think this is where a lot of uh, the frustration in the fan base uh, and in the general in the general fan base that I've seen comes from. Because uh, so in this plot, we see all of his take-ons. We see the successful ones in yellow and the unsuccessful one in gray. So, like, as you can see, he, out of the 101 take-ons that he has attempted so far in La Liga, only 33 have been successful. And I think this is where a lot of the talk about his efficiency and how he is being wasteful uh, with the take-ons come from. But I personally don't agree with that. Uh, and there's a reason for that because take-ons serve uh, a two-way purpose. Like, you can... He is an incredible, incredible dribbler. He can take he, he can take any player on. He can make them he can make the defender look like a fool uh, with his skill set. But one of the major advantages that people forget when a player attempts a take on is their ability to engage. And as as Vinicius has grown in the league, as Vinicius has grown as a player over the years. People have become aware of his ability to uh, beat them in a 1v1 situation. And as they have become aware, they have set up accordingly uh, against him. Now that has resulted in him not being able to succeed in as many take-ons as possible uh, as he would when he was uh, a fresh face with when nobody knew much about him. But now teams set up against him with two players on him 
and like try to outnumber him on on the touch line so it becomes difficult and his efficiency and his efficiency i would say quote unquote ha has gone a bit down but that is not true because he's still engaging a lot of players he's still he's still pulling out two two of their players if they're trying to stop him in take ons and if they if they do it uh, successfully that's still like two players uh, that he has drawn out of position and opened up a space for for the other uh, other players if they do manage to bring bring him down then that's a foul and this is something that uh, i think i would i would like to point out that arteta also uh, mentioned when they signed uh, when arsenal signed gabriel jesus and gabriel jesus uh, take on numbers if you look at them they aren't like as elite or like he isn't succeeding in eight of 10 dribbles or anything but the key thing that he does is he is engaging the defenders so like he is making the defender he is forcing the defenders to make a decision when they come up against him so do you do you let me get past you with my skills do you bring me down or do you put multiple players on me and thus open up space for my other teammates and that is what you want like even if a team is more fo more focused on vinicius now so like they are putting multiple players on him now that in turn opens avenues for other players in in the team and that is something that is very valuable so although he has succeeded in only 33 uh, of his take ons out of the 100 he has attempted there is still value in the ones that he has not managed to be successful in because some of these have resulted in foul in dangerous areas some of this has resulted in uh, a loose ball that was recovered by Real Madrid and then played to the other side quickly with the two players drawn to Real, uh, to Vinicius Jr. and that opens up space. So it, it's a uh, it's a way to uh, look at what is actually happening and to measure the pros and the cons of each action. I know, like on the on the surface level, it looks like oh, Vinicius only has thirty percent efficiency on on his uh, dribbles. That's not a lot because he uh, attempts a lot of dribbles. He's a high volume dribbler. Uh, that would seem like he's being wasteful when he gets on the ball, but that's uh, that's far from the truth. That is what I feel, and I think people should be uh, looking a, a bit more into it about how efficient or the way he's able to engage defenders and create opportunities for other other players in the team uh, so yeah i think the criticism there is a bit misplaced let me add to this because I, I think we did a good job of explaining why the criticism is misplaced and why only 33 of 101 take-ons being successful is not an issue and just to to reiterate because to me one of the most underrated things is just high volume high volume high volume whether it's take-ons whether it's shots whether it's, um, you know, forward passes or creative passes, people will look at the percentages of those things and start to criticize and say, well, this is a low percentage of things and look at the high volume. The best goal scorers in the world have extremely high shot volume. Kylian Mbappe, Lionel Messi, just look at the World Cup numbers. from their, their, their shot volume was insane in this World Cup and they have the most goals or the most goals and assists, you know, combined. And then you look at... Um, successful percentage passing a lot of these these playmakers in the final third their successful passing percentage is very low and it's because they're, they're more daring with the passes which by the way makes Cruz even more impressive because a lot of his passes are vertical in nature and he's still basically at 200 percent passing um i think some further context of vinicius jr these numbers i found really interesting because if you look at his dribbling percentage stats his successful dribbling percentage stats. This is actually the lowest it's ever been. But he's attempting um, he's attempting a lot. So for further context, his successful dribble percentage has dropped every single year, basically. Last season was his worst ever at 45%. His first season at Real Madrid was 58.6%. Last season is worse ever, and this year is even worse. Last year is 45.5%, which also coincides with his best season ever. Despite the lower percentage, he completed 95 dribbles in La Liga, which is almost double, and actually well over double of his first season. So the, six, the percentage is down. The percentage of successful take-ons is down, but the volume and the successful ones are also way up 
So he's just causing a bunch of chaos. And so certain fans, depending on how they look at the game, they'll they'll remember the ones that that weren't successful. And that's, I think, the unfortunate reality of the way some people read the game. The other interesting thing, because you mentioned the fouls, he's been fouled 49 times in La Liga this season. Do you want to know how many players have been fouled more in the top five leagues? I think there there won't be few. There will will be fewer like none. I think zero. I think yash zero. Yeah. No yeah. player in the top five leagues has been fouled more. And the staggering thing about that is that that probably could be way more than forty nine. I can yeah, just double. you can probably flash back to every game and there's been like five to ten fouls each game where like just weren't called. Because the refs like, well, what am I supposed to do? Blow the whistle every time. That and and in my opinion, I think the refs need to protect him more. But that number actually should be higher. So I think that it's it just these are just further context um, to what's happening. Any other further things on these slides before we move to the next one? Yeah. Plus, uh, one thing that I would like to add is the areas that he is attempting these dribbles. Because when you attempt dribbles in your own half, there is a lot of space, and you have the you have more freedom to beat a player. Or you have more space to beat a player and attack into. But when you, as you move towards your towards the opposition goal, there is not as much space, and that is why, like you mentioned as well, the players who play in that attacking midfield role or are the main uh, offensive threat creators with their pass, uh, like the creative passes in in the final third, they don't have as much space to play with as compared to the deeper midfielders. So, like usually their passing percentages are low. And that is the same thing with, with the dribblers. It also matters where they are attempting these take-ons uh, because there is a, not a lot of space in the attacking third for them to exploit when compared to somebody who is attempting a lot of dribbles in, in their own half and they have like 80% success rate, but their dribbles are not adding as much immediate value because of the location that they are attempting them in. So uh, that is just one point that I wanted to add.